Hello, I'm Daisy Cousins. Welcome to This Week in Social Justice. This week's biggest and baddest social justice fails include Democratic Congresswoman Maxine Waters' latest attempt to incite unrest, this time on the streets of Minneapolis, Black University professor Dr. Shaniqua Walker Barnes pens a prayer begging God to help her hate white people. And depending on how long I feel like talking about the first two topics, we may even have time for a bonus topic. So let's get started. If you've been paying any attention to the news cycle over the last few weeks, you will know the trial of Derek Chauvin is currently underway and that tensions are running particularly high since a verdict is expected very soon. And you will also know that there have been even more protests and riots in places like Portland, Chicago, Minneapolis, you know, all the usual Democrat-controlled cities, over the shooting of Duante Wright by a white cop. Now. Somebody who is always at the forefront of racial division is Maxine Waters, a Democratic congresswoman from California. Go figure. On Saturday evening, she turned up outside the police station in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, to protest the death of Duante Wright. However, she also had some strong words regarding the trial of Derek Chauvin and what she thinks should take place should the rioters not get the verdict that they want. We've got to stay in the street and we've got to, we've got to demand justice. We're looking for a guilty verdict. We're looking for a guilty verdict and we're looking to see if all of the talk that took place and has been taking place after they saw what happened to George Floyd, if nothing does not happen, then we know uh, that we've got to not only stay in the street, but we've got to fight for justice. But I am very hopeful and I hope uh, that we're going to get a verdict that is say guilty, guilty, guilty. And if we don't, we, got, we cannot go away. And not just manslaughter, right? I mean... Oh, no, not manslaughter. No, no, no. This is, this is guilty for murder. I don't know whether it's in the first degree, but as far as I'm concerned, it's first degree. It's coming from what happens if we do not get, get what you just told? What should the people do? What should protesters on the street do? I didn't hear you. What happens... What should protesters do? Well, we, we got to stay on the street. Uh, and we've got to get more active. We've got to get more confrontational. We've got to make sure that they, th they know that we need business. Okay, first of all, it should be obvious to even the stupidest person on earth that it is inappropriate for a congresswoman to incite a riot, let alone from an already riotous Antifa Black Lives Matter movement, by suggesting they should become even more confrontational, especially since their current level of confrontational has involved, among other things, setting fire to an Apple store in Portland. Second of all, it should be pointed out that Maxine Waters falsely accused Donald Trump of inciting what happened on January 6th and condemned him in the sternest of terms. Ironic that not only is she explicitly inciting a riot a few months later, this is not the first time she has called for mob, for mob violence. A couple of years ago, she incited her supporters to push back on and harass Republican lawmakers if they saw them in public. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. We've got to get the children connected to their parents. And the thing is, she's always been like this. She's always supported violence against people she doesn't like. Tucker Carlson pointed this out on his show regarding the comments she made about the LA riots back in 1992. Maxine Waters is someone who supports mob violence. She always has supported it. We have known this. Almost 30 years ago, when race riots leveled huge parts of Los Angeles, Maxine Waters cheered them on. People want to know why I'm not saying exactly what they want me to say, she said at the time. They want me to walk out in watts like black people did in the 60s and say, cool it, baby, cool it. Well, I'm sorry. The fact of the matter is, whether we like it or not, riot is the voice of the unheard. It was quite a riot. 58 people were killed during those riots in 1992. Many more were seriously injured. One of those most seriously injured was a man called Reginald Denny. He was beaten nearly to death. He was left with permanent brain damage. Why? Because he looked 
the wrong way. He had the wrong color. Maxine Waters defended the men who did that. The ringleader of the mob who pulled Reginald Denny out of his truck was a man called Damian Williams. The day that the jury was set to deliver a verdict in the Williams case, Maxine Waters visited Damian Williams' home and offered her support. Quote, we have an opportunity for justice to prevail, Waters said. But of course, in the minds of Maxine Waters and the people who defend her, that is, people who are wildly deluded and completely lacking principles, it's okay when they do it. Especially when, just a few hours after Maxine made those statements, the Minneapolis National Guard were fired at in a drive-by shooting, injuring a number of guardsmen. Cause and effect? Hey, perhaps. But remember, like I said, it's okay when they do it. And third of all, considering the jury had not been sequestered at that time, there was every chance her rhetoric could taint the jury and prevent Chauvin from receiving a fair trial, both in terms of prejudicing them and also terrifying them into pushing through a guilty verdict lest these increasingly confrontational rioters come after them. Certainly the defense brought it up on Monday. My phone gives me alerts on things that just happened. I mean, you can't avoid it. And it is so per pervasive that it is, I just don't know how this jury, it can really be said to be that they are free from the taint of this. Um, and now that we have US representatives uh, threatening acts of, of uh, of violence in relation to the specific case, uh, it's, it's mind-boggling to me, Judge. And the judge acknowledged the potential severity with this statement. Well, I'll give you that Congresswoman and Waters may have given you something on appeal that may result in this whole trial being overturned. He then continued. I wish elected officials would stop talking about this case, especially in a manner that is disrespectful to the rule of law and to the judicial branch and our function. I think if they want to give their opinions, they should do so in a respectful and in a manner that is consistent with their oath to the Constitution, to respect a co-equal branch of government. Their failure to do so, I think, is abhorrent. I really like that judge, and Maxine should be really embarrassed she got told off by a member of the judiciary. But all levity aside, I am sick to the back teeth of the double standard of the regressive left when it comes to political violence. I mean, we had months and months of riots, injuries, and deaths last year thanks to Antifa and Black Lives Matter, all of which were not only excused, but encouraged by many Democrats and leftists. But the second there is a hint of it from their political opponents, all of a sudden political violence is domestic terrorism and abhorrent and perpetrators should be punished for it. They have deluded themselves into thinking that their cause is so morally superior and their opponents so evil that they and they alone are justified in doing and saying anything they want in order to emerge victorious. Add to that a depraved lust for power and you've got the perfect storm for a violent, tyrannical movement. All I am asking for from Maxine Waters and leftists generally is some consistency. Either all political physical contact is okay or none of it is. I for one think absolutely none of it is okay. It is never acceptable. I just wish Maxine Waters and everyone else screaming about decency and unity shared my pacifist view of politics. Enormous social justice fail to Maxine Waters on this one. Christianity is touted as having its foundations in love, compassion, and forgiveness, at least in the New Testament. Jesus Christ spoke of a loving God who would protect the meek. He commanded us all to love one another and promised salvation if we repent of our sins and forgive those who sin against us. So it's a wonder university professor Dr. Shaniqua Walker-Barnes, who describes herself as a clinical psychologist, public theologian, and ecumenical minister penned a prayer asking God to help her hate white people. This prayer, entitled Prayer of a Weary Black Woman, was published in a book called A Rhythm of a Prayer, a Collection of Meditations for Renewal, which caught the eyes of many after photos of the text started to circulate on social media, accompanied by comments such as, Woke Christianity is a cult. So what was in the prayer that raised so many eyebrows of people of all skin colours? Let's read and find out, shall we? Dear God, please help me to hate white people, or at least to want to hate them. At least, I want to stop caring about them individually and collectively. I want to stop caring about their misguided, racist souls, to stop believing that they can be better and that they can stop being racist. Hmm. 
She then clarifies that she's not talking about hating all white people. No, that would be bad. She said she is not talking about the white anti-racist allies who've taken up this struggle against racism with their whole lives, or even the ardent racists who plot acts of racial terrorism hoping to start a race war, stating those people are already in hell and that there's no need to waste hatred on them. So which white people is she talking about? Well, as she puts it, the nice ones. My prayer is that you would help me to hate the other white people. You know, the nice ones. The Fox News loving, Trump supporting voters who don't see color, but who make thinly veiled racist comments about those people. The people who are happy to have me over for dinner but alert the neighborhood watch any time an unrecognized person of color passes their house. The people who welcome black people in their churches and small groups, but brand us as heretics if we suggest that Christianity is concerned with the poor and the oppressed. The people who politely tell us that we can leave when we call out the racial microaggressions we experience in their ministries. But since I don't have many relationships with people like that, perhaps they are not a good use of hatred either. Lord, grant me then the permission and desire to hate the white people who claim the progressive label but who are really wolves in sheep's clothing. Those who've learned enough history, read enough books, spent enough time in other countries to make themselves seem knowledgeable even though that knowledge remains far removed from their hearts. Those whose unexamined white supremacy bubbles up at times I'm not expecting it, when I have my guard down and my heart open. Lord, if you can't make me hate them, at least spare me from their perennial gaslighting, white mansplaining, and white woman tears. Okay, so I'm going to point out two things here that are quite interesting. The first is that she openly admits she doesn't know many conservative or Trump-supporting white people, and yet she still passes judgment on them, which surely is hypocritical since she criticizes them for only letting black people into their churches and in small groups and then kicking them out for allegedly saying the wrong thing. The second is that Dr. Walker Barnes and I share a common dislike, racist white progressives. This seems to be a group she has a bit more experience with, and it's certainly a group that I have made more than a few videos about. You know, the white leftists who claim to be anti-racist, but have the, what I like to call, poor little brown person complex, as if non-white people need to be protected and facilitated by white people lest they become offended or hurt because they just can't protect themselves. As Dr. War Walker Barnes correctly puts it, it's their unexamined white supremacy. They claim the progressive label by really being wolves in sheep's clothing. Malcolm X called this type of white leftist out as well, decades ago, when he asserted that white leftists are the worst racists, because they pretend to be the friend of black people, but really they are just jockeying for power in order to use black people as weapons against white conservatives. It was true then, and it's true now. However, is writing a prayer to God to allow her to hate white people really the way to go about dealing with this kind of white person, and then trying to justify its Christianness, so to speak, by insisting she'd modeled it on the book of Psalms? No, sorry. I am definitely not the perfect Christian, but I don't think writing this prayer is the most Christian way to go about things. After all, didn't Jesus say to turn the other cheek? Huge social justice fail here, just huge. Bonus topic. We have a bonus topic this week. President Joe Biden is becoming increasingly well known for two things. His senior moments and also his tacitly racist moments. Here's what he said a few days ago to the Prime Minister of Japan about recent Masters champion Hideki Matsuyama. Yoshi, I know how proud you are of the people of Japan are. And uh, you've got a Japanese boy coming over here and guess what? He won the Masters. He won the Masters. He won the green jacket. Now, here's the thing. This isn't really that bad of a slip up, and I'm not actually saying that it is. The point instead is that had Donald Trump used the word boy to describe anyone from a non-Anglo-Saxon country, the media would have flipped over itself. I mean, can you imagine the reaction? But since it's Joe Biden, silence. But as I've said before, media double standards when it comes to Trump and Biden really should not surprise us at this point. I mean, if they didn't have double standards, they wouldn't have any standards at all. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment. And if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me. Mm -hmm.